running some containers, you're gonna need a whale to do that. And this one, we're gonna use Docker. Let's go! Today we're gonna take a look at JWT Decoder Challenge from this year's Hackers Playground organized by Samsung Security Tech Forum. Of course, I'm studying Node.js web programming. I wrote simple JWT Decode website with popular Node packages. Using recent packages, I'm certain that there is no severe security issue. Well, we're gonna find that out. Provided source code contains Docker files needed to run this locally. And this time, we're gonna try to use it this way. Docker is the most popular tool for containerization. This means that we can use it to run our apps in the separated environment similar to a virtual machine. In my case, I'm running Docker on macOS, but the system inside the containers is Linux. The huge advantage in comparison with traditional virtual machines though is performance. Containerized environments does not need to have a separate system instance for each running VM. Instead, with its layered architecture, it shares more resources between containers while still preserving proper environment separation. Another advantage is that machine configuration is easy to share. Docker files are like a recipe for creating a container image. With a series of actions to perform can be turned into an image using docker build command. Then with docker run we can start container that's based on that image. Container is an images running instance. Let's take a look at our docker file. At the top we can see what is the base image that will be extended. Then application files and the flag file are copied from local file system into the container. We can see that the flag will be stored in machine's root directory. Expose says that the port 3000 should be accessible from the outside of the container. User and work dir sets the user account and initial working directory for the commands that will be run in the remaining part of the build process. Run allows to execute system commands. In this case, it installs all necessary node modules for the application and sets proper file permissions for both application code and the flag file. Last command, entry point, tells what will be the main process for this machine. In this case, it's Node.js running the application code. Normally, we would use docker build and docker run commands to start it, but the challenge includes docker compose file that will make it a bit easier for us. This YAML file is an instruction how to build and run one or multiple connected containers. It can create virtual networks, manage port bindings and internal routing. In this case, we can see it says we're gonna use one container running as JWT decoder service. With build section, we specify that it should create its image using Docker file located in the same directory. Ports says that the port 3000 in the machine should be available under localhost 3000 in our host machine. We can type docker compose app. It took a moment to build, but the server is now running on port 3000. Opening it in the browser, we can take a look at the app itself. It seems to be a simple application that decodes contents of provided JWT. We can click apply and see all parts of JWT token in its plain form. I was talking more about the structure of JSON web tokens in one of my previous videos, featuring right now in the top right corner. CTF School is not only about challenge write-ups, but I'm rather trying to show and explain interesting techniques, vulnerabilities and tools, so don't forget to subscribe not to miss new episodes. Getting back to our challenge, description mentioned that used packages got no severe security issues. Let's take a look at that. Docker scan will be a good command to test our image against Snyk database to find potential vulnerabilities. Let's do it right now. Docker scan sctf jwt decoder. It takes a moment to analyze it, but when it's done, we can see there's an RCE vulnerability in one of used libraries. Let's follow that lead. Description says that we can pass view options object with output function name formatted like this to execute shell commands. Sounds wonderful, but there's additional notes saying this vulnerability is exploitable only if the server is already vulnerable to prototype pollution. Is that true? Looking into the application source code, we can see it's fairly simple. The JWT decode is provided via cookies, which seems a bit strange, but okay. The JWT cookie is assigned to row JWT variable. Then the token is parsed and header, body and signature fields are assigned to it. Finally, row JWT is passed to the render method where EJS library puts all this data into the template. Remember, 
EJS is the library that we are looking to exploit. It seems that passing view options to the render method might just be it. And the fact that this data comes from the cookie we control means we might not need prototype pollution here and still be able to exploit it. Let's try to write an exploit. Creating exploit.py file, we will import request library to send our payload with the carefully crafted cookie. Let's say our command will be simple id and let's put it into the code we found on Snake website. Modify it a little bit to have our command in the right place. Let's make a request and attach this payload as JWT cookie. Cookies should be URL encoded, so let's use quote function. And then print the result. Let's try if it works. Hmm, nothing happened, but we don't know if our payload was correctly interpreted. Here comes an advantage of running it locally with Docker. We can modify the challenge code a little bit to give us some extra insights. Let's say we want to see the row JWT variable right after cookie value is assigned to it. Let's start our container again, but this time with the build flag to make sure that our code change will be applied. And run the exploit. Hmm, it seems to be a string. We need it to be an object containing settings field with few options inside and so on. Basically a nested object. But how can we pass it to a cookie to be interpreted like this? At this point, I have to mention, this was the part I've spent most time with. Googled it in many forms, but without any luck. No article says how to pass cookie in a form that will create an object, not a string. Some even mentioned it can only be a string. Well. At my last resort, I decided to look into cookie parser library source code on GitHub. Fortunately, it's a very small library with all the logic wrote in a single file. Browsing it, I found this comment. Parse JSON cookie string. Seems like a way to pass whole objects inside a cookie, doesn't it? In here, we can see that if we prefix our cookie with J colon, it should be interpreted as JSON. Time to rebuild our exploit. Let's say our cookie will be an object. And we will serialize it to JSON prefixing it with j colon. Let's test it now and see how row JWT looks like. Oh, now it's better, but the command result was not displayed. Seems our RCE is blind. Not to worry though, let's try if we can take the flag file and send it with CURL. Modify our command a little bit to be CURL with method post attaching binary data from slash flag.txt. And let's send it to webhook site. Webhook site acts as a log for HTTP requests. We just need to enter it and copy our unique URL. Paste it in here and run our exploit once again. Let's take a look and it worked. <laughs> we got the local fake flag. Our local environment should act exactly the same as the remote one. Let's try it on the live server. Change the URL to the one from the challenge description, run exploit again, check our webhook and here it is, the flag, this time a real one. So cool! I hope you enjoyed this episode of CTF School. Write in the comments what would you like to see in next videos. Like and subscribe not to miss any new episodes. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.